Oh. Social media has become an integral part of most of our lives, but it hasn't come to that point without some fascinating backstories behind each platform, which is exactly what we're looking at today. In fact, there's a great free tool called the Wayback Machine, which archives the internet and allows you to go back and see what websites look like in the past. And what better place to start than YouTube? Remember when YouTube looked like this? Or even this? Maybe, but what you probably don't remember is that at one point, YouTube was meant to be a dating site. According to co-founder Steve Chen, it was designed as a way for people to upload videos of themselves talking about the partner of their dreams. There's a great quote from one of the founders though, where he says, the whole thing didn't make any sense. We were so desperate for some actual dating videos, whatever that even means, that we turned to the website that any desperate person would turn to, Craigslist. So, they literally started offering to pay women $20 to upload videos of themselves to YouTube, but still nobody was using this new video dating platform. Having said that, I wonder if they were just a bit before their time. It wouldn't surprise me if Tinder or a competitor rolled out some kind of short form video online dating site soon. But anyway, the failure of this dating version of YouTube coincided with Janet Jackson's Super Bowl incident in 2004, otherwise known as Nipplegate. It was being talked about everywhere, but it was hard to find any videos of it online. So the YouTube guys ditched the dating angle and said, well, let's just allow any videos to be uploaded. And so YouTube was born. And thus the first ever video was posted titled Me at the Zoo. All right, so here we are in front of the uh, elephant. However, because of YouTube's extremely fast growth in those first two years, Google ended up acquiring the company for $1.65 billion. It's funny how at the time that sounded ridiculous. Now it sounds like an absolute steal. Then by 2009, backed by the resources of Google, YouTube started allowing HD videos and creators started realizing the potential of hosting their videos with YouTube and becoming YouTubers. By 2012, we had the first ever video with 1 billion views, the mighty Gangnam Style. And as of right now, YouTube is the second most visited website in the world and around 5 billion videos are watched every single day. But what about Instagram? Well, it started off with a guy named Kevin Sistrom who had no training in computer science. So he decided to learn to code at night after work. And as a part-time project to test what he'd learned, he ended up building an app named Bourbon, inspired by his love for whiskeys. As for what the app actually did, well, it's kind of a blur. It let users check in at particular locations, make plans for future check-ins, earn points for hanging out with friends, post pictures of the meetups. It was a confusing blend of many things and it didn't really catch on all that well at all until they decided to massively simplify things and just prioritize one thing, pictures. They cut the rest and in 2010 properly launched the app only for it to become the number one free photography app within just a few hours. Before Facebook went on to buy Instagram, the executive chairman of Twitter actually offered $500 million for it, but Systrom declined, even though he knew the chairman from back when he was an intern at Twitter. But they held out for an even bigger payout from Facebook not long after that. Although considering Instagram is now worth $100 billion with 500 million daily active users, perhaps they could have held out even longer. Let's move on to Snapchat. The history of Snapchat involves three key people, Evan Spiegel, Reggie Brown, and Bobby Murphy. They were all classmates at Stanford in 2011, and while studying a product design course, Brown initially came up with the idea of a platform that allows users to post photos that disappear shortly after. And at a time where people were starting to realize that their social media history could come back to haunt them, it seemed like there could be real demand for it. So Brown took the idea to Spiegel, who loved it. And since neither of them could actually code it, they both then went to their friend Murphy to bring the vision to life. Although when they initially released the app in 2011, it was called Pickaboo. However, although it was Brown who seemed to have the main idea originally, he ended up getting pushed out of the company, which isn't ideal considering the other two went on to become billionaires. Next up, Facebook. The first very raw form of Facebook was known as FaceMash, which Zuckerberg created in 2003 for students to essentially judge who's hotter between the pictures of two people. 
but this had to be shut down as pretty much all the pictures were used without permission. This almost got Zuckerberg expelled from Harvard, but before long, he released The Facebook, a site where you could upload pictures, connect, and share your interests. The dark side of the story, though, is that Zuckerberg was being sued by two of his fellow students who said he stole their idea. That didn't slow him down, though. The Facebook spread to universities in the US, then Canada, and eventually it became available to everyone. Facebook now has 2.6 billion active users every month. And finally, let's look at Tumblr. Tumblr is the love child of Instagram and blogs, and was created by 19-year-old David Karp, who was inspired by Tumbleblog. Tumbleblog refers to short blogs, which we now know as text posts. Karp evolved the idea of Tumbleblogs and launched it in 2007, and again, another big payout was in store, as it was eventually bought by Yahoo for 1.1 billion. Then in 2017, Verizon took over Yahoo and acquired Tumblr as well. Whilst it can't really keep up with many of the other big social platforms, it does currently get just under 400 million visits every month. As for Twitter, I've recently been reading the story of how this company evolved and there's a lot of twists and turns there, so if you'd like a more in-depth timeline of how the events unfolded with Twitter, which was originally meant to be a place to discover podcasts, hit the like button and leave a comment and I'll make a video on that in the future if there's enough interest in that. I hope you enjoyed this roundup though, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.